friends, it's another episode of the past seeds empowering your lives. Well, it's always an interesting and beautiful moment having this time with you. Our topic today is having right attitude. And our key text is taken from the book of Philippians 2 5, and it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, what an amazing word. Let this mind of Christ also be in you. I'd like us to look at the thoughts on the text. The dictionary defines the word attitude as arrangement of the part of body or figure, posture or a position, assumed for a specific purpose, a mental position concerning a fact or state, a feeling or emotion toward a fact or state, the position of an aircraft or spacecraft to a reference point, like the horizon. Having the right attitude is key in life. And most importantly, a person's attitude isn't set, it's a choice. So you must have to make a choice with the kind of attitude you want to portray out there, is the right or the wrong attitude. It's really very important. Okay, let's look at this right now. How many jobs do people lose every day because of wrong attitudes? Each day you get to hear people talking about, I lost my jobs and all of that. If you get to look at it, you realize that it's a wrong attitude they go there to portray. Now, how many are passed over for, for promotion because of the way they approach people around them? Or because of their attitude in their place of work? You don't get to be promoted and all of that. So attitude, it's everything. How many marriages fall apart? It will be impossible to calculate. For Moses, he was, it was anger. Moses' anger actually made him not to get to the promised land. So it was also an attitude problem. Hallelujah, look at this. God gave Moses a simple instruction and he let his poor attitude push him into disobeying God. He didn't obey God because of his attitude. I pray that the Lord will give you the grace to have the right attitude in all you do in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as a result, he was denied entering into the promised land, like I said earlier, the place of his rest. A good attitude will not just get you the best from a man, but also from God. So if you have the right attitude, you also get the best, not from man alone, but also from above. Hallelujah. Now, how do we apply the right attitude? I'd like us to look at that right now. I'd like us to look at the application. Moses could have just turned a deaf ear to the complaints and the memory of the Israelites, but he chose to react. Lesson. Now, look at this. The lesson you must learn from this is you must not react to everything you hear or see. I'd like you to say that to yourself. Say, I must not react to so everything I hear or see. So it's not everything someone does to you that you must have to react. Now look at this. Silence is not a show of weakness. Your silence can also be your greatest strength. That your silence over someone's attitude towards you doesn't mean you're weak. So it can actually be your greatest strength. The book of Proverbs tells us clearly that anger lies in the bosom of fools. So I guess you're not a fool. So you shouldn't get angry because of that person's attitude. You can as well have the right attitude over the person's actions. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A wise man is always slow to wrath. Having the, having the right attitude would mean that you bring yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit to some level of self-control. So you allow the Holy Spirit to help you to control your attitude and your actions. Hallelujah. Think before you talk or act. So you must have to think before you talk and also act. Remember, attitude is a choice. You don't just do everything you want to do because you, just, you feel you just want to do them. You must have to do it because it's the right attitude. So it's a choice. I'd like you to say to yourself, I'll portray the right attitude wherever I go because I have a choice for the right attitude. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is going to help us portray the right attitude wherever we go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'd like us to take this prayer together. I'd like you to bow your heads and let's take this prayer together. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Help me to have the right attitude towards the people in my life. May my thoughts, choices, and words please you. In the name of Jesus, it is done in Jesus' name. Now I'd like us to put our hands together for the Lord, for I know our prayer has been answered already. Now we have an action point. What are we supposed to do? Now what we're meant to do is choose not to react to any offense today. No matter what the person has done to you, even if it's something that you cannot hold yourself back on, choose not to react to that offense. When you're offended, remind yourself that I will not react. And the Holy Spirit is going to help us not to react to any offense today. In the name of Jesus, it is done in Jesus' name. Remember, it's still Life's Internet or TV, your gateway to possibilities. And I'm your host today, Constance Kingsley. See you again next time. There are men that rise by level. There are others that rise by favor. There are men that toil their way to the top. There are others the oil of God takes to the top. I am a man helped by God. His oil has lifted me to the top. And today I want to invite you to encounter that God that lifts men. To encounter the God that changes destiny. To encounter a God that answers prayer. To encounter a God that can make you what you want to be. I want to invite you to meet a God that can never fail. And today, your life will change for good. Is it Chimo? Oh, yes, I'm a Is it Chimo? Oh, Yahweh, is it Chimo? Is it Chimo? You're the God who never, never, never fails.